Currently, data centers use nearly 5% of the world's electricity. And like a runaway train, these trends are accelerating towards unsustainable levels. Today, 30 Google searches requires a similar amount of electricity, equivalent to boiling one liter of water. And while our computing technology has enabled fast and mobile computing, our best chips can cook an egg in under a minute due to the amount of heat they dissipate. And while we cannot easily replace this incredible technology, fundamental physics says we have not reached the fundamental limits in terms of efficiency. We have a long way to go. To this extent, what we have now is fantastic, but it may not be sustainable from an energy point of view. This presents a challenge to scientists worldwide. Not only do we need to think about smaller and faster, but inherently we need to now think about energy efficiency. Can we exploit the smallest constituents of matter, namely a single atom, and understand how they interact to be able to come up with new and innovative ways to be able to store and process information? If we can observe phenomena at these length scales, can we also observe new types of physical phenomena which we also may be able to exploit towards this end? In Nijmegen, at the Institute of Molecules and Materials, in the Scanning Probe Microscopy Department, we ask ourselves such questions in being able to understand matter at the level of a single atom, and also how spins behave and how they interact, whereas spin is the atomic analog of an everyday magnet. However, the understanding of how spins behave at the level of a single atom and how they interact at this length scale is still one of the biggest challenges in modern day physics. Our group is trying to develop methods in which we can image these spins down to this level with cutting edge precision. The difficulty in understanding charges and spins at this level is actually being able to develop techniques in which we can actually see how they move and interact. A single atom of iron is more than 10 billion times smaller than a meter. How do we see something that small? Conventional microscopes, which utilize light, are limited in resolution to about a micron, which is a factor of 10,000 times off of what we need to resolve an atom. Therefore, tracking individual atoms requires a departure from utilizing light as the eyepiece into the nano world. And to this end, we can use a funky quantum phenomena called quantum tunneling. If we consider a light bulb powered by a battery, we have a current which flows and it lights up the light bulb. In a classical world, the light bulb will only work if the filament is intact. If the filament breaks, the light bulb won't turn on anymore because there's no longer a current flow. However, quantum physics tells us if the broken filament has a gap that's so small, with just say a distance of a few atoms, the electrons can still tunnel across the little barrier even though there's no real physical contact. The probability that this electron will tunnel across this gap is exponentially dependent on the size of this gap, creating a very, very sensitive measure of distance. So therefore, a big gap means no current, and as this gap shrinks, more current flows. This was the basis of building a microscope in which the tip of a metal filament is brought very close to a surface, and it scans it like the needle of a record player. This microscope, called the Scanning Tunneling Microscope, was the basis for a Nobel Prize in 1986 by Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohr. The working principle is very similar to that of a record player. The needle moves around the surface, it can track atomic scale variations and produce a map. Moreover, this is sensitive to the surface topography as well as its electronic and magnetic properties. This finally gives us an eyepiece into the nano world we need. With the help of STM, one can obtain fascinating images of different surfaces. For example, we can visualize the surface of just a piece of copper. Here you can see the individual atoms of the copper surface resembled by this threefold symmetric structure where each protrusion represents an individual atom in the lattice. We can image uh, individual atoms we choose to place on top of such material. Here you can see an individual atom of iron which is also placed on top of the copper surface. And with utilizing advanced growth technology, we can also fabricate systems from individual atoms up to synthesizing very large nanoscale structures which can be utilized for storage and processing technology. And one of the more fun aspects of STM, we can also utilize the tip of the microscope to move individual atoms around. This also gives us the ability to fabricate structures down to the single atom level. Here, you can see an example of individual carbon monoxide molecules, which have been moved around atom by atom in order to fabricate the logo of our institute. As one can imagine, such an imaging technique is extremely sensitive to vibrations, 
Our STM tip is only parked a few atoms away from the surface, and atomic scale movement can completely distort the images in which we try to take. To be able to keep things extremely still, we also work in ultra cold environments, close to temperatures of minus 273 Celsius. That's just a few millikelvin above absolute zero. To be able to look at materials of our choosing, we work in so-called ultra high vacuum environments. And a fun fact for you, in these conditions, a molecule would have to travel nearly 40 kilometers before it sees and scatters off of another molecule. To this end, this gives us the control we need to be able to do all sorts of high precision measurements that we're interested in performing. In Nijmegen, based on years of experience and tradition in building STMs, we have built one of the most advanced laboratories toward high precision measurements using scanning tunneling microscopy. Our spin labs, we call it, are used towards our objectives, which are largely aimed at understanding new materials and manipulating matter down to the level of an individual atom or molecule, and creating new methods of energy efficient information storage and processing technology. A highlight of our recent developments is our newly constructed Still Lab, which sets a new state of the art in such microscopes, and it's housed in one of the quietest laboratories in Europe. We're able to characterize matter down now to temperatures of just 30 millikelvin and variable magnetic fields. Our department is composed of a diverse and international set of scientists in the collaborative environment of the Institute of Molecules and Materials. We're always excited to hear about new ideas and meet enthusiastic people. So if you're interested in our work, please feel free to contact us and hopefully we see you here one day in Nijmegen.